I recently received some questions from a recent civil engineering graduate on how to start off her career in the right way. How to learn quickly, what to learn, where to get field experience, find mentoring. And I'm gonna answer all of those questions in this episode. And this just goes to show you, put your questions in the comments, we will answer them. We wanna help every engineer have the best career they can have. Before I dive in to answer these questions, I do wanna recognize our sponsor for this video, Collier's Engineering and Design. Collier's Engineering and Design is a multidiscipline engineering firm with over 1,800 employees and 63 offices nationwide and growing fast. Collier's Engineering and Design maintains an internal culture that is nurtured through the promotion of integrity, collaboration, and socialization. Their employees enjoy hybrid work environments, continuous career advancement, health and wellness offerings, and programs and projects that have a positive impact on society. Collier's Engineering and Design stays on the cutting edge of technology and their entrepreneurial approach to expansion provides personal and professional development opportunities across the firm. Leadership's dedication to the well-being of their employees and their families is demonstrated throughout the wide range of benefits and programs available to them. For more information, visit the career page on their website at colliersengineering.com. First question, do you have general advice for a civil engineer to be successful on the job and learn quickly in their first year? So I'm gonna give you five things you could do to hit the ground running in your civil engineering career. Number one, get into the field and gain field experience as soon as possible. If you have an office job, volunteer to get out onto project sites. This is critical. I started my career on a survey field crew. I was holding up a rod. And I got to tell you, it was the best thing I ever did. It was invaluable experience. And I'm going to give you a story to explain why. After I'd had that survey experience, I got into the office. I was working on a, a plan and I saw that someone had put a catch basin inlet or stormwater inlet on the plan. And they drew five or six pipes into that catch basin. And I knew that five to six pipes coming into a catch basin just wasn't something that was feasible or realistic. I knew it because I saw it in the field. I saw catch basin being constructed. So I was able to make the proper adjustments. Get out in the field. Number two, find a mentor. You have to find someone with more experience than you in your career to bring you along. And the earlier you can find them, the better. So how can you find a mentor? Ask someone within your company. A lot of engineering firms have mentoring programs in place, formal mentoring programs, where you can get connected with a more experienced engineer. Secondly, professional associations. A lot of professional associations like the ASCE, for example, might have mentoring programs where they can hook you up with other members that are more experienced than you to get that mentoring experience. And if neither of those work, go right on LinkedIn and try to find someone out there that's willing to do it. Put a post out to your network. I'm sure you'll find someone that's willing to volunteer to help you. Now, if you do find the mentor, be consistent with that relationship. Have calls monthly or every couple of weeks. It's like if you were to have a gym membership, but you never went to the gym, right? It has to be done consistently. So find that mentor and meet with him or her consistently and ask as many questions as you can. Which leads me to number three, be a sponge and learn everything you can early in your career. You should be asking questions every day of your manager, of your colleagues, of anyone you can get in front of about civil engineering, about the discipline that you're in. There's no such thing as a stupid questions and you should ask questions all of the time and then keep a notebook and write down all the answers. Number four, volunteering for whatever initiatives you can get involved in, whether it's volunteering on projects, volunteering in a professional association, committees, going speaking about STEM at schools, get out there in your industry and volunteer. Not only will it be a rewarding experience, but you will find those mentors possibly and meet people like I talked about earlier. And number five, read. And specifically read industry journals, magazines, so that you can keep up with trends in the field. I can't tell you how impressive it is when I talk to a young civil engineer and they just know what's going on. Hey, you heard about the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act? And they start talking about it, right? It's very impressive and it keeps you plugged into what's going on. For example, the ASCE, again, they have a civil engineering magazine. As a member, I get it every month and I read it and it keeps me up to date, All right? So those are five things you can do to hit the ground running in your career. Get field experience ASAP, find a mentor through your company, through LinkedIn, through an association, 
be a sponge and learn everything you can by asking a lot of questions. Volunteer wherever you can, professional associations, for things within the company. And number five, read, stay up to date on industry trends. So that was an excellent question. Um, and you could put more questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them, whether you're listening to this audio or watching it on YouTube. We love getting questions from engineers. All right, next question. Do you have any tips for young civil engineers on how to get up to speed with design practices? learning codes, field practices. Again, great question, because this is exactly what you should be doing early on in your career, right? Learning the technical side of the business. Now, in terms of learning practices, it's going to go back to what I talked about in the last question, get project experience. The only way to learn sound engineering practice and knowledge is to actually do the engineering. So just get into your project, start learning, start learning about different equations, trying different things, again, talking to other people, you need that project experience. In terms of learning codes, first of all, talk to your teammates that you work with, your colleagues, your supervisor, understand what codes are important to the work you do in the region that you're in. That's number one, because you don't want to learn, take the time to learn about codes that aren't kind of integral to what you're doing. So that's really important. And then once you figure out what those are, you just got to learn the codes. You probably got to sit there and read through some of them. I know it can be dry at times and it may be boring, but at the end of the day, that is your business. If you're an engineer in a specific discipline, you need to know the codes and regulations so that you can execute for your company, for your clients, for your community. So it's not the most glamorous part of an engineering career, but it does give you that credibility that you will need to succeed. And in terms of field practice or constructability, things of that nature, it goes back to the first question, get in the field. You've got to find a way to get in the field. And if your company can't pay you to do it, volunteer to do it. Ask them if you can go out with the survey crew for a few weeks just to observe. I know it sounds crazy giving up some of your time to do this, but believe me, that field experience is the number one thing a civil engineer can do to grow in your career, period. Before I go on here, I'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI's reputation and history sets them apart. PPI has helped engineers achieve their licensing goals since 1975. Their courses and review materials are based on decades of experience. They schedule their courses over two to three months to ensure you can properly retain information and allow enough time for homework. They ensure students don't have to cram for their exam. Their course comes with everything you need. They offer robust programs with access to lectures, forums, learning hubs, books, slides, etc. Their programs place a big emphasis on homework. They believe that practicing as much as possible is crucial to exam success. PPI's instructors are very highly rated on student surveys. They're extremely attentive and knowledgeable. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. Again, that's ppi2pass.com. Last question. Do you have any tips on how to organize resources and knowledge accumulated and stay up to date? A couple of different things that you can do here. First of all, having an actual physical paper notebook that you keep with you at all times can be critical for staying organized as an engineer. Me personally, I always like having those five subject notebooks. I know it's like going back to school, but maybe technical was one of the sections. Maybe proposals was one of the sections. Codes was one of the sections. And it allowed me to stay organized with my note-taking efforts and just really stay up to date and make it easy to find things. Secondly, you might use a digital notebook instead or in addition to a paper notebook like Evernote or OneNote. Again, this allows you to create maybe different divisions of the notebook, or you can use different notebooks in the OneNote platform, and that allows you to stay organized. And in that case, you can share those notebooks with other team members. I personally like the pen and paper approach, but some people prefer the digital, and for good reason in today's world that we live in. So have some kind of note-taking system where you can really capture this information in an organized manner. So there you have it. I hope that the answers to those questions will help you in your civil engineering career, regardless of what experience level you're at. If you happen to be more experienced, maybe you want to share this episode with a younger professional, maybe someone you're mentoring. But all I can say is continue to leave comments with your questions about your career as a civil engineer, and we will try to answer them and really help you to grow your career. I hope you found those questions and answers helpful for you in your career. I think they apply not just to recent graduates, but I think engineers of all ages can utilize some of these actions and strategies to build your knowledge and be the engineer you want to be. 
If you like this video, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers become better managers and leaders. I hope to see you next week.